start the recording. <clears throat> Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the November um, community meeting for the I2B2 Transmart Foundation. Um, we're using the GoToWebinar system. I, I know most of you are familiar, but if you would like to ask a question, uh, please raise your hand or leave a comment in the, um, in the, in the chat room, chat window, um, and we will uh, recognize you as soon as we can. There will be uh, time for discussion and questions at the end of the, the session today. Uh, our agenda that we have planned for today uh, is listed here, um, and we'll go through the, the topics uh, in a moment, although uh, we're happy today to have the chairman of our board, uh, Gil Oman, for joining us, and Gil is going to say a few words once I mute him. Okay, Gil, I think you're unmuted. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you, fine. Great. Well, I just want to add a welcome to all of you. To this uh, community monthly encounter and what we hope will be the stimulation of many other interactions among you is essential to the goals and productivity of the uh, newly combined I2B2 Transmart Foundation and our platforms. We think there's a lot of power in these combined platforms and analyses. There's some terrific examples, some very useful data sets, and most of all, a quite diverse and capable group of people in this community. So um, we have a, a list of six uh, potential or already existing working groups for discussion today, and I really encourage you to think out of the box about ways that you can benefit and you can contribute uh, to the development of these activities and to uh, uh, studies that will be publishable and useful and bring more attention to the whole enterprise. So thank you for participating and thank you, uh, Diane, for your leadership, taking on the lead role for the combined organization and uh, Rudy and the rest of the team for uh, uh, all the effort we need to bring this to a higher level. So let's have a good call. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much, Gil. Now I'd like to turn it over to our executive director, Diane Keough. Diane? Thank you, Rudy. And um, and thank you very much, Gil. Um, really appreciate your um, your efforts and your uh, your leadership in, in the foundation. So, um, you know, good morning um, and good afternoon to some people, depending on where you are. Um, I, I really appreciate um, the fact that people are uh, are calling in on a um, on a holiday week. For for many of us, it is a it is a short week, and people are scrambling to uh, to buy their turkeys and get to where they're uh, they're going. So, um, thank you very much. So, I wanted to um, I wanted to give the group um, an update on our uh, the membership uh, meeting that we had our first membership meeting we had last week, um, and kind of give you an overview of of the, the things that we, we talked about and um, some of the proposals. I mean, this is this is just the beginning of that group and we're trying to get ourselves really organized. Um, and then Rudy will talk about the event working group um, and we'll have uh, an update on the PMCs um, and, then, um, and then open it up for questions. So uh, Rudy, you can go to the next slide. So this is this was this was kind of the the basis for the membership meeting. I mean, what we really want to focus on is the is the community um, because it Transmart I two B two and Transmart. It's not just about the platform. It's not just about you know developing these tools for people to use. It's really a, an approach to enable clinical and translational um, research, and it it's all about the community, right? I mean, I've been. Um, Really, just amazed at you know as I've gone to, to conferences over the last year between the conference in Har at Harvard, the conference in Paris, and then you know a number of AMIA meetings. There are so many people that use these tools and have done like fantastic things with these tools and and are are um, uh, you know are, are working in smaller groups to do certain things and you know and different you know different grant opportunities and. 
you know, kind of in, in little silos. And if we can figure out how to pull some of that together um, and work with these people, I think that um, we'll have a really a, a richer, a richer community, a richer platform. So, um, so it's all about it's all about you. This is this is this is this is what's going to make or break this um, this effort. And I um, and I'm and I'm I'm hopeful and enthusiastic that um, that it'll keep moving on. So, Broody, next slide. This is um, so just to to and we talked about this before, but just to give you uh, um, another overview. This was the list of the original members, and and what we did when we when we merged the two foundations was we took the, the people from that were on the board and also people who are actively participating um, in in ITB toward transmit mark. This is by no means a complete list. Um, we just we, we decided that we would just pull certain people and start fairly small. Um, the um, and Rudy, you can go to the next slide. So one of the, the first things that this group was um, was set off to do was to elect new members. So we had an election um, uh, earlier this month, and here are the new um, the new uh, people who have been elected to the the membership committee. So once a year, the members will be able to uh, elect new members. So this uh, this 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 group of of members will continue to grow, and um, in addition to electing new members, what we talked about was really how we were going to work as a membership group and how we were going to going to move forward. And um, that's where the idea of creating um, working groups um, came up. So Rudy, you can go to the next slide. So I'll talk about Rudy, uh, the working groups a little bit more, but here I, I, I just wanted to give you the structure. This is the governance model, and, and many of you um, that participate in these calls have probably seen this before. We have a board of directors. We have a small leadership team. Um, we talk a lot about the project management committees, and those are the development groups that develop the three separate platforms. Um, the members here in the middle is is the piece that's new. So this is this is. These are the the new folks that, uh, that you just saw listed, and and what we what we came up with that at that meeting was the members that group can't do things you know um, in in a silo because there's so many different things that need to be done. So what we talked about doing was really creating working groups within the membership committee. Okay, that will focus on um, specific problems, and we came up with a proposed list. We'll talk about that. We, you know, people can certainly propose other things, and we can, you know, we can, um, you know, we can move on that. So, Rudy, why don't you go to the next slide, and I'll talk about kind of the guidelines for these uh, working groups. First of all, open participation. Okay, you don't have to be on the member list to to participate in a working group. So members, partners, sponsors, you know, community, everyone, foundation staff certainly will, um, we can participate in these. So it's very open. Um, it does have to be self-managed though. So the group will create a charter and, and um, the group will select a chair, select the, the goals and objectives and, um, and report um, on the, the work of the, the working group at the members meeting. Um, and, and certainly, uh, these types of things will be reported up to the board as well. So the board will be aware of, of what's happening. Okay, uh, as far as a budget, um, you know, if the group requires a budget, you know, we'll have to, we'll have to, you know, work on that and coordinate that with the um, foundation staff. Um, this is another reason why it's so important for us to really have a, a strong partnership program that helps fund the foundation to give us some base um, Funding for for things like this that will need um, could need um, additional support. We can go to the next slide, Rudy. Um, so the process, you know, uh, hold web-based scheduled meetings. Um, you you kind of get kind of get that you got to get that in place. Um, there's probably people all over the country, so they can't be in-person meetings. Um, and then we can give you um, a place where you can publish your minutes of the meetings, um, you know, including decisions, recommendations, action items, um, et cetera. So next slide. Uh, 
So the, the things that we talked about, the working groups that we talked about were, um, were the things listed here. Um, number one, training. Um, we have we have a training program for Transmart. You know there may be additional trainings that people are interested in um, for Transmart. Um, certainly, we would love to replicate that on the ITB2 side. Um, I, I I just I know I know there's a lot of there's a hurting need for that um, because I monitor the um, our our, uh, our help um, uh, listserv. So I see like all of the questions come in and people um, people could really use some some support and technical support and how to how to install it um, and also how to how do you know organize yourself a, a, around doing user training there's been some really good use cases around that so that's one area where I really um, I've 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 volunteered to um, participate in that um, group. Um, I'm not the expert I can't train people so I'm going to have to pull people from the community. But I think this is a this is a way to really you know um, you know highlight the work that you've done in, within your own organization and really get some recognition. So that's that's one. Um, um, the other the other is ontology. So ontology is really um, is always a hot topic. There's a lot of work a lot of work going on around ontologies, um, both within ITB2 and Transmart. This is something that could uh, really cover both um, both platforms. So. Um, you know, I, I'd love for, for people to, to, to sign up um, for this. Um, ETL is always a hot topic. And again, that really covers both platforms. Um, we did a little work on the I2B2 side and had a few um, sessions at AMIA where we had some best practices that people were very interested in. Um, and people were willing to share the ETL that they've already developed. Um, but we really didn't take it to the next step. We really, we really need to get out there and publish that and pull more people in. Because um, that's an area that people struggle with. Um, there's always there's always security um, that we need to um, to worry about. So this was actually a um, a suggestion from one of the the members to create a security um, group. Um, and then a, a common UI. So a common UI that would cover I2B2, Transmart, um, as as well as um, perhaps Shrine. Um, if we're if we're focusing on merging the two or creating, a, you know, a, a platform that covers both applications, you know, it, it would be really fantastic to have one um, one single UI um, that handles um, both. And then, you know, case studies. This was another suggestion um, from the the members. We are we are in desperate need. There's so many wonderful case studies out there of, of things that uh, people have done. Um, across both applications, and uh, it, you know that stuff is buried. And and case studies are really it's it's like gold to us. That helps us, you know, explain to potential partners, you know, the power of of what is possible with this application. So that is something that, you know, and people people can get you know recognition for this too because we can we can highlight what you've done in your organization and um, and have that posted and talk about that at, at events at our uh, events. And then the event working group, which um, is already up and running, but we certainly need more participants, and Rudy will talk about that more. So we are we are going to be sending out um, communication soon to the community, um, asking them if they would like to uh, participate in um, these working groups. And um, if we get you know enough people for them, we can we can start a we can help launch you know the first meetings, and then and then. Um, and then get the the people within the group to you know, uh, pick a chair and and decide on the the charter and the rules. So this is I this is, this is we got to get this off the ground. This is is so completely important. And again, if people have I, thoughts about additional um, working groups, we can we can certainly um, add those. So uh, next slide, Rudy. So Rudy, uh, I'll let you take it from here. Okay, thanks, thanks, Dan. Um, so we felt like one of the, the Rudy, areas. Just, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Can I Sorry. make a quick comment? Sure. It's. Good. I wanted to pick up on the uh, uh, mention of publication when you when you talked about ETL, you mentioned possibly of publications. I think we've not done enough of this to date. It's an opportunity from people from the community to take the lead or to propose. Um, an individual or a team effort that would generate publication. It would certainly help spread the ideas and the methods and bring attention to the whole program. So I, I want to put a special emphasis on that 
comment from you. Thanks, Diane. And Rudy. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Gil. Okay, so um, one of the clear needs was was to to try to you know decide with the, our new foundation, you know, what what do we want to do in terms of events? And we had an organizing committee that has been working on first the the Transmart annual meetings, and, and this past year, we, you know, just year we we tried to too quickly pull together a, a meeting, um, but um, you know, just to to you know, we we sort of made the decision to to tap the same group uh, to get us started at least and. You know, I kind of uh, decided that I would be, you know, to get this started, I would chair it and try to get it moving. Um, but th these are the folks who have been working on, you know, planning um, our largest event of the year. Um, and, and this group has worked on um, both the annual meetings for the Transmark Foundation and also the meeting that we've held at Harvard for the Precision Medicine meeting. So we kind of, uh, you know, in, in invited them to participate in this. Um, but created what we're, you know, we're calling the events working group. Um, and just to give you an idea, the, the purview of the events working group is really to expand, um, you know, the, the foundation and the community, right. And consider all the different potential events that we might be involved with and whether we're um, uh, actually going as a, a sponsor to a, a meeting or have an exhibit booth or you know, try to have a poster or a presentation we're just socialize, you know, which, you know, what activities are, are people who are using uh, one of the foundation platforms uh, presenting or, or hearing, you know, at these different events and really try to put together an overall program, you know, of what, you know, what should the foundation be interested in, you know, going forward. So, you know, scientific meetings and, um, you know, what other organizations, you know, are, are having events that, that we should be aware of and uh, publicizing more. Um, and really to create an event strategy uh, for the foundation. I mean, we've had, you know, a budget. We've, we've picked certain meetings to go to, but uh, we're, we're really trying to take a step back and take a much broader view of what, uh, what should we be doing, you know, and in particular, you know, what, what annual meetings do we want to have? You know, we're already uh, committed uh, to, to work with uh, at, at the Harvard's Precision Medicine meeting and have uh, one of our user events there. Uh, we've uh, the ITB2 side have always been to AMIA and done some things, um, and we had you know the Paris meeting, which was a very excellent uh, ITB2 user group meeting. How do we bring all these together in, in a sense into a strategy that we can put you know our efforts and you know hopefully some of our budget to to really help out uh, to 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 make these successful? Um, on the screen now, you see these are the the meetings that we've been talking about uh, participating in and. We have from the transport side um, attended the, the Tricon molecular medicine meeting in San Francisco and BioIT world. Um, you know, we're really questioning, are those the right meetings uh, to, for us to be uh, attending? And then probably not, you know, with our you know, larger precision medicine focus. Um, but what, what sorts of things should we be doing? You know, one of the, the thoughts we've been having is um, to consider the June meeting at Harvard, uh, our, our kind of our U.S.-based um, spring annual meeting, and then look for uh, in the fall to have you know another meeting in Europe um, that would be you know uh, launching off of the Paris meeting this year. So you know these are the types of, of discussions and considerations that we'd like to to put in place, um, and you know really consider you know what what we think we should do. So you know whether it's it's you know trying to figure out where people. Yeah, go ahead, Joe. But I just, I just think when we put up meetings, they're already scheduled. We should give the dates. So if there's any chance that somebody is interested, okay. they can sure. turn right into the All calendar right. and Sorry. make a note to follow up. Yeah. So the Boston meeting in June is 26, 27, 28. And right. uh, I hope many of you plan to come or others of you will consider coming. It's, it was a spectacular meeting the last two years. Yep. Thanks, Gil. And these are on our events calendar, also on the website. Um, but the other, you know, the other question is, you know, where, you know, where are the places that we, we really want to be introducing, you know, uh, or, or demonstrating the I2B2 Transmart platforms? Um, you know, and these might be scientific meetings, you know, around precision medicine or translational research, you know, et cetera. Um, what other foundations, you know, should we become maybe more active with, you know, UK Biobank, Elixir, uh, Elixir gave, um, 
a, a nice, very nice talk last year at our San Diego meeting, um, see Bioportal, et cetera. So, you know, we're really trying to, to open up and, and, you know, consider, you know, doing more hackathons, for example. Um, you know, so these are the types of things we're trying to look at, trying to, to decide, you know, kind of where we want to go with this. Um, right now, the plan is for this group to meet once a month. Um, and so the next meeting is scheduled in December. Uh, and if you're interested, we have on the website already uh, under the uh, member membership uh, working group um, uh, page um, the opportunity to, to actually join this working group. Uh, and so this is out there. You can see the web um, web link at the bottom of the page there. So if this is something that you're interested in and want to become involved with, you know, again, you can click that and, and join. Um, we'll be doing a similar thing. You know, we'll be having a separate um, web page for each of the working groups uh, as they form. Uh, and similarly, you can follow their, their activities. Uh, as we said, you know, the minutes will be published and available to everybody. Uh, and, um, you know, really, you know, bringing these, these working groups together is an essential part of how, you know, we believe the, the foundation will grow uh, in the future. So we encourage you to consider, you know, participating to these things, see which ones of these might be of interest to you and, um, you know, think about getting involved. So we're going to switch to the PMC's um, uh, updates. I'm going to do the first one, so I'll just keep the floor here. I'll talk quickly about the Transmart PMC. Um, this is the, the people on the group. Uh, you can see uh, participation is, is pretty broad uh, in terms of different groups and different you know, types of groups, both um, developers, uh, people who work with the, the platform, uh, and support customers and uh, do a lot of the, the testing of the environment uh, as well as users. Uh, so it's, um, you know, we really try to to have a, a, a good group to participate and, and really drive the, the release. Um, our roadmap um, is, is here. Um, and, uh, you know, today, you know, we have 16.2 for Transmar out there. We're working on 16.3 and 16.4. Uh, and then uh, the 17.1 core, uh, again, coming, as we've talked about, in 2018. Just a, a couple of details on these. 16.2 um, has been out for a while. It's been a very stable um, version uh, and continues to be. Uh, we're going to be extending it to the uh, to Oracle. Uh, we've been working on this for a while. We're, we're trying to get this completed by the end of the year. Um, so it'll be uh, the next version that supports Oracle. Uh, and then uh, another version uh, coming out hopefully in the spring, um, which will include you know a few more things, uh, portfolios with Smart R and a few other um, pieces there. Uh, and we've made the commitment that the version 16 um, line of the platform will continue to be supported. Um, it'll be the active version throughout 2018, and we will continue to support it at least another year after that. And that means you know bug fixes and, and support for it. Uh, and so this, you know, it can be a very solid um, platform for us. We're also working on the 2018 uh, release, which is based on the 17.1 project. Uh, the 17.1 uh, server release is continuing to be worked on. We're trying to get that out um, this by before the end of the year. Uh, and uh, this major effort to get the, uh, the 2018 release with all the capabilities, with a new graphical user interface, et cetera, uh, it's something that we're working throughout 2018 to, uh, to actually deliver. So the program continues, uh, a lot of support. The, um, the PMC meets uh, every two weeks, and uh, we're continuing to, to try to drive the, you know, the updates and enhancements to the platform. Uh, again, if you have interest, you know, you're, you know, we are welcoming. We certainly will welcome participation in the PMC. Okay, um, I2B2. Uh, roadmap, I think, is Janice going to present? Yeah, I think Janice. Okay, Janice, you're unmuted. Okay, it's going to actually be Mike and myself. Okay, super. So, yeah, okay, we have both um, of your names. Sorry. Okay. I think Mike's going to do most of the talking because my voice is no, going. <laughs> Excuse me. Is he on a different line? Then I need to unmute him. Yeah, he is. Hopefully. Okay. If he's not on the line, he said he was going to be. But if he's not, then I'll do it. You'll just have to bear with my voice. <laughs> yeah, let me see. Uh, it's one of the times okay, where everyone's glad I'm on a conference call instead of face-to-face. -face. 
<laughs> okay, and Mike, I think I think I just unmuted you, Mike. Yes, you did. Awesome. Okay, super. I was trying to Thank figure you. out how to like tell you guys. No, no, I, I do that. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. just gonna raise my hand and up and down a bunch of times. It's really fun. <laughs> awesome. Okay, great. Thank you. So yeah, so this is a collaboration of Janice and I and everyone else. Um, yep. Okay, so the next screen. Okay. Oh. Uh, okay. The so PMC. Yes. Yeah, so this is the members. Uh, I think we've gone over this a few times, but uh, we have some new members, which is great. Uh, looking forward to working with all of the new members. Uh, and I think it's going to be great. Okay, so next screen. Okay, so there's been some changes to the I2B2 kernel, or what we call the I2B2 kernel. We've called it the I2B2 hive before. And I'm so. Ask next screen, Rudy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So the I2B2 rule kernel is the essential component of the I2B2 system. Before we used to consider I2B2 being like the I2B2 server side, and then the web client and the workbench. The kernel is really just the core I2B2 components. Um, next screen. Uh, yeah. Next screen which will kind of break it down into more detail. So we have the Hive, which is the CRC, the ontology, the project manager, and the workplace. It used to be that the identity management and the file repository were also part of the Hive. They've been uh, migrated out as kind of a plugin or an optional, because they've always been kind of an optional uh, component, both the uh, identity management and the file repository. As far as the clients, we uh, have two big main clients, the traditional web client that we've used, and then also the workbench, which is kind of an administration module. And so those are our main our clients. And as far as the database, so we support Oracle. Postgres. Mike, can I interrupt you there for a oh, minute? Oh, go for it. Yep, go for it. Um, the, the workbench is actually considered a plug-in now, and it's optional. That ITB2 administration module is the admin which is the other piece of the web client. That's the PM piece where you can put in your users and your projects and so forth. So the I2B2 workbench is no longer part of the core component, the kernel. It's an optional piece that will be supported as if it was a community plugin now. Okay, great, yep. Yeah. Thank you, Janice, uh, for me telling this information. So, at the databases we support Oracle, Postgres, and SQL Server. In the foreseeable future, I see us still supporting these three. Um, people ask, why not MySQL? And in order to do MySQL, we have to do, uh, be able to do a full text search. And MySQL doesn't support it as thoroughly as Postgres, SQL Server, and Oracle. And I don't foresee MySQL ever really supporting it because their yeah, parent company is Oracle. So they want you to spend the uh, hundred thousand dollars on their Oracle license instead of a free license on MySQL. So that's our databases. Uh, the next screen. Uh, you want to jump in this on this one, Janice? Yeah, basically, so all new development that's going to be done is going to be done through the I2B2 community. So the community is going to be re responsible for developing, maintaining any new cells that get developed, any new server and client plugins, any new ontologies. They're going to submit a change request when the, um, when the core or the kernel needs changes to support their new cells or plugins. So the I2B2 core team now, which is Mike um, <clears throat> and myself, and uh, although I'm not a developer, so I won't actually be making the changes, but I'll be managing them, is um, they'll be managing the I2B2 kernel. So when the community develops a new cell, but they need a change made to the, um, for instance, the CRC or to the XML messages, they'll submit uh, a request, which we'll see on the next slide in a second, on uh, that request will get evaluated and then the core team will make the changes to the kernel so that it can then be deployed out to the rest of the community. <coughs> Excuse me. And basically the I2B2 Transmart Foundation is going to be re 
responsible for coordinating that initial setup on the uh, community sites like the wiki setting you up with the project in jira and then also setting you up with the repository if you want in github <clears throat> if you can go to the next slide rudy excuse me so the next slide is so basically uh, so yeah. You want to do it, Mike? Uh, yeah, it sounds like I'm, I'm sorry. I forgot That's that okay. your mouse was doing it. But yeah, so <laughs> if there's a, a, a new submission you want to do, you contact Janice and she'll create a new project for you. Uh, she'll then and send you the project development form to get more information about it. And then she'll also create a wiki space for you. Um, and a, we can create a JIRA uh, project in the JIRA so that we can track issues and then migrate it, uh, do branches, and et cetera. And then optionally, we can do a repository in the GitHub, um, or you can use your own uh, GitHub repository. So uh, the next screen. I think that's it. Yeah. And this is basically a work in progress, just so that everyone knows. Uh, no, there was one more slide. Sorry about that. Um, so we will tweak this as we go along and it's going to be based on feedback from the community to say you know this just is not working or the forms not capturing this information that we need um, or uh, whatever we're going to base some of this back on the community's input <laughs> go ahead mike sorry uh yeah no I, that's basically like you said it's a work in progress uh we'll tweak things as needed and yeah. Okay, so the next screen. He just went on it. Oh, he did? I, I have yeah. a delay. I have the change request form. Yeah, that's what it that's, is. So that's the, the last, yeah. That's oh, the last okay. one. Yep. So basically, okay. the change request form, basically, the first one is that you have a project that you want to start. That allows us to get the wiki and to find out about it. Now that you've started your project and you find out, oh, I need, um, some changes made to the to the kernel. This is when you're going to do a change request form, and it's basically going to go to the PMC, the ITV2 PMC, um, in which you'll have all the technical documentations, the specifications, and so forth. The PMC is going to review the request, and they're going to do one of three things. They're going to either approve it, in which now they'll give an estimated time of delivery. They're going to return it because they need additional information or they're going to reject it based on the information that's provided because either the change uh, because the change can't be made to the ITV2 kernel maybe I don't know what the reason could be maybe it's something that's not it's specific to your site it's not going to benefit all of the ITV2 community or something like that <clears throat> so that's basically the new development process that we're thinking of that will pull it in and allow the community now to maintain the development going forward for the I2V2 products um, so that the I2V2 core team really will only be maintaining the kernel from here on in. <clears throat> and that's basically okay. the I2V2 PMC. <clears throat> Thank you. Diane, did you want to say any any words about the IWB Transmart PMC? Uh, so we, I don't, I don't really have an update on on what's happening here. I know they um, they are in the process of of putting um, a list of things together that they're going to focus on. I mean, it, it's it's really taking what Paul Aviak has done at Harvard in his sort of you know pilot um, projects and. Um, and merging that with a, a newer version of, uh, of Transmart and making it open source for for everyone to use. Um, so there'll be a, they'll, these here are the the members of the PMC, and there'll be a lot of information um, about this as we uh, as we start to really move forward. Okay. Okay, I think that's that brings us to the end of the prepared things. Wanna 
what we thought we'd do. And, you know, we can now have a, you know, just open the discussion on, you know, really anything of the, any of the topics that, you know, we cover here today, the PMCs, anything about foundation itself or working groups, comments or, or whatever. If you would like to say something, um, you can raise your hand or type a question in the question window. Over the next few days, we will be getting a, a communication out on the working groups with uh, at least a brief description uh, and um, uh, links in the website with uh, with these descriptions as well and an op opportunity to uh, volunteer. Hopefully, you'll see something there that uh, is of interest. Um, basically, for those people who were working with the Transmart Foundation previously, these are Kind of taking the place of the three C committees, uh, a lot of the activities of Transmar Foundation were driven by these community committees, both on the code development side, uh, on the the community development, uh, as also the content uh, committee, which um, did a lot to bring data sets into the into our foundation uh, curated databases that were publicly available, uh, and so we're trying to spark you know similar types of, um, of interaction uh, really the you know the foundation is going to rely on you all to to really you know help uh, make the you know the things that we do uh, focused on in the right areas focused on the right events um, focused on the right activities I don't see any questions or hands raised Diane you want to some um, comments yeah, just um, actually, can you go to the the last slide, Rudy? Okay. So we we really we really want to, you know, if you sometimes it's hard with these these calls to um to kind of jump in and make comments, but we really want to hear from the community. The community really, you know, needs to to drive the, the things that we're thinking about. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna end every call with this slide because we really want to hear from you. And so we we do have a place on our website. Where you can um, you can post you know comments. Um, you you can also certainly email me directly or Rudy directly. Um, but you know we we want to we definitely want to hear from you. So any other last call for questions comments? If not, I think we'll. Um, I think, okay. I don't see anything. So, uh, Go ahead. We'll end, we'll end now and, and, and certainly um, hope that everyone has a, a great rest of the week. And um, if, you're, if you're eating turkey, um, enjoy and uh, enjoy your time with your family. So thanks, everyone. Okay.